Hi, today we're going to talk about nuclear notation. Before we get into it though, let's review real quickly some basics on how to read the periodic table and get information from it. So we're going to look at the element carbon. So if you have your periodic table to look, have a periodic table to look at, please do so. We've learned that this top number, the atomic number, tells us the number of top number tells us the number of correct protons and electrons so carbon normally has six protons and six electrons and how do we determine neutrons we learned that it's the atomic mass minus the atomic number equals neutrons so we have atomic mass of 12 minus 6 equals 6 so in this case we have 6 neutrons now, normally that's about all you would do, is they would ask you protons, electrons, or neutrons, and that would be it. But now we're going to learn one way that we, as chemists, can do this notation. So, when we're writing this in nuclear notation, what we do is we put the 12 here, the atomic mass, and we put the atomic number down here. The last thing that's on here is if there is an electric charge we'll put a number here so we put the atomic mass on top atomic number on the bottom and the electric charge here okay so in a sense we flip flop the box and write it down and then we write this now where does this come in handy this comes in handy when we're dealing with ions and atoms that don't have the normal number Number of protons. Do the number of protons for carbon ever change? No, they do not. The number of protons determines the chemical element. So if the number of protons were to change, we would completely change which element we're dealing with. So carbon will always have six protons. This number will always be six. However, as we're starting to learn, carbon can gain or lose electrons. So for, for just an example, let's say carbon happened to have eight electrons instead of just six. Okay, well, normally six positive, pro normally six positive protons and six negative electrons would cancel each other out. But we have how many more electrons than protons? Two two more negative charges which means carbon actually in this case would have an electric charge of negative two but we're going to start writing it at, with the negative after the number okay and that's to help us not get confused later with the math okay so it has a two negative charge because it has two extra electrons now what if instead of going from 6 to 8, it went from 6 to 4, I now have two more protons than electrons, so I have two more positives, so it would be 2 plus. Okay, so to find this number, it's just protons plus electrons, okay, and electrons are always negative equals that number. So for example, we had six protons and four negative charges, or four negative charges. What do I have? A two positive, a positive two. So we're gonna write two positive. A second ago, we had six protons and eight electrons. Electrons are negative, which is equal to a negative two. So we're gonna write that as a two negative like we did just a second ago. Okay, now, what if the number of neutrons is different? And we've learned that the number of neutrons is different. It's called an, what's it called? It's called an isotope. Isotope. Same proton, different neutrons. 
Okay? Same number of protons, different numbers of neutrons from the normal element. So carbon normally has 12. But we can have carbon. So carbon 12. That's isotope notation, by the way. Carbon 13, which is what this is. 6 plus 7 gives us an atomic mass of 13. We're working this equation backwards. Okay? 6 plus 7 is 13. That's carbon with 7 neutrons. So how do we do this over here? Well, all we do is add the two. Six plus seven is 13, and it goes there. So this is the atomic mass, which atomic mass, atomic mass is equal to protons plus neutrons. So whatever this is equal to is what goes there. So just a quick review. Atomic mass, which is protons plus neutrons, goes here. The atomic number, which tells us which chemical element it is, goes here. And then protons and electrons added together, and whichever one has the, the whatever we get is what goes here. Just remember, electrons are negative charges, so we're going to do our math with negative numbers. Okay, so let's practice a couple. Let's do lithium, which is 3 and 6.9, okay? So, protons is how many? 3. Electrons is how many? 3. Neutrons. Be careful. We round this to 7, all right? 7 minus 3. Atomic mass. Minus atomic number equals neutrons, which equals four, four neutrons. I see. So the nuclear notation would be atomic symbol, atomic mass, which is seven, and then new protons down here. And is there any electric charge? No. So we're not going to write anything. Okay. Let's try another one. Calcium 42. So, protons is 20, electrons is 20, electrons is 20, and neutrons. Be careful. Normally we would use this atomic mass, but we have isotope here with a different mass. So it's going to be atomic mass of 42 minus the atomic number which gives us 22. Nuclear notation would be calcium 40. Oh, be careful. Watch out. It's this mass, right? 42. Atomic number of 20, which that should never change, right? And then what's the electric charge? Those are even, so there's no electric charge. Okay. So now let's take a look at lithium. What if I had two electrons for lithium? So what if I had two electrons for lithium? I have one more than this, so that's one more positive. So three, three plus two negatives equals a positive, right? A positive one. So that's going to be one plus. You need to write the positive sign because I have one more of these. Calcium. Let's say I had 18 electrons. 20 plus a negative 18 equals 2. 2 plus, positive 2. I know some takes some getting used to writing the positive after, but that's just the way we do it for chemistry. Okay, let's go back to our lithium. And let's say I had four electrons. Four electrons. Three plus a negative four is a negative one, so that becomes a one negative. Now what if this became 24 electrons? 20 plus a negative 24 makes that a negative four. So we're going to write four negatives. 